this lesson, we're going to learn how to construct a frequency distribution and a histogram using five simple steps. And we have a data set that's already listed right here, and we want to be able to summarize that data in some way. So that's what the frequency distribution does. It allows us to see the frequency of occurrence of a certain group of numbers. And then the histogram allows us to visually represent this data so we have a graphic that we can use to uh, summarize the data as well and help make uh, decisions and stuff like that. But before we begin, we have to really look at how many uh, data points that we have here. In other words, our sample size or our population size. And we have five rows and five columns. So this data size, n, is going to equal 25. So five rows, five columns of data would be 25 data points. And then the other thing we want to find is our maximum and our minimum. And one of the methods I use to do this when I have a data set and I'm doing this by hand is I call it the circle box method. I put a box around the biggest number in each column and then put a circle around the smallest number in each column. And I start off with one rather than mixing the two together just so I make fewer mistakes. So I would go through this column right here and I look for the biggest number and like I said I put a box around it, move on to the next column, find the largest number, and it doesn't matter which eight you choose. And then the next column, we put a box around the largest number. The next column, box around the largest number. And then the last column, we put a box around the largest number. So then what we're able to do is we're able to pick out real easily what our largest of those values are, because the largest of the, the five columns is going to be the, uh, and then the largest in the box of the five columns is going to be the largest number. So my maximum is 15 and I put a double box around that. So my maximum data point is equal to 15. And then we move to the minimum. So I use circles for the minimum. And again, I go through and I circle each one of these data points. So four is my smallest there. Three is the smallest in the second column. Zero is my smallest in the third column. Two is my smallest in the fourth column. Five is the smallest in my fifth column. So now I can visually look at all the circles right here and find the smallest number that resides in all those circles and it happens to be this zero right here so this happens to be our minimum value so the minimum is zero the maximum is 15 and we want to have those numbers because we're going to use those later on to help us uh, build this frequency distribution in the histogram all right so the first step in this process this was kind of a pre-step right here but the first step in the process is to determine the number of classes or the numbers number of groupings that we have and we're going to use what's called the 2k method so when we do that, it's 2 to the k power has to be greater than n, or our sample size. Our sample size is n, so we're really looking at 2 to some power k, which is greater than 25. And we're going to choose the first value of k that this is true. And we could go through and we could write down all the powers of 2. We could say, well, 2 to the first is 2, 2 to the second is 4, and 2 to the fifth power is 32. So when we look at 2 to the 5th power, this is the first time that that value of 2 to the k power is above 25. So that power of 5 is our value that we want to select. We could choose a bigger one, but what ends up happening is we create more classes. The frequency distribution gets kind of diluted a little bit, and when you look at the histogram it gets even more diluted. So we want to choose our value of k equals 5. The next step that we have to do is we have to determine the width of each of the intervals. And they have a nice formula for this. And they say the interval width has to be greater than or equal to, the top is going to be the range or the maximum minus our minimum all over the number of classes we chose, which is our value of k. So all we're going to use is those maximum and minimum values and then the k value, which we just found over here, to help us determine what our interval width should be. Okay, so our interval width should be greater than or equal to 15 minus 0 divided by 5. And we, when we do this, the interval width should be greater than or equal to 3. And you might be wondering why why it needs to be greater than or equal to and why it's not just strictly equal to 3. Well, not all the time we're going to have nice data to work with. I actually chose nice data points so they work out really nice. So for instance, if we had 3.5 or 3.7 or something like that for interval width, we're not going to want to count by 3.5 or 3.7. We're going to want, want to round that up to 4 or 5 or something like that. And if you had bigger numbers with decimals in there, you're going to want to round it up to something that's easy to count by. So that brings us to step two. And in step two, we are going to establish the class limits 
based on that interval width which we just determined. So I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. And when we look, look at our class limits, we're going to count by that division. Remember our minimum was 0 and our maximum was 15. So we are going to start with 0 for the beginning of our class limit and we're going to count by 3's. And we're going to use something called the left endpoint rule, which basically means that our set of data or our class is going to include the left endpoint but not the right endpoint. So we'd write this as 0 is less than or equal to x, x just symbolizes one of our data points, is less than 3. That's going to be our first endpoint right there. So it includes the numbers 0, 1, and 2 in this interval but not the number 3. And if we had decimal values it would include all the value, decimal values up to 2.99 repetent. Then the next class interval is going to be, your class limit is going to be 3 is less than or equal to x is less than 6 and 15 is less than or equal to x is less than 18. So that should be all the uh, class limits that we have right there. And these actually become our class intervals over in this table on the right. You know, the one thing that I do want to point out, and I'll scroll up so you see this, is when we choose our value of k equals 5, we should end up with five class limits, but that's kind of dependent on what our smallest and our largest values of our data set is. We had 0 is our smallest data set, and then we had 15 as our largest, so our, our minimum and maximum. We don't include 15 in this, this interval right here, so that kind of skews it a little bit. So in the ballpark, you should be maybe plus or minus 1 um, interval, depending on what you choose as your starting point and your ending point when you go through and set up these classes. So we ended up with 6, and that's okay, and that, that's close enough to work with. So the next thing we need to do is we start, need to start building our frequency distribution. And when we build our frequency distribution, we're going to use those class limits over here, and then we're going to count up the frequency. So this first one is 0 is less than or equal to x is less than 3. And then we'd go back up to the data, point, data table, and we'd calculate or count up the number of numbers that are between 0 and 3. So when we go through and do that, you can see there's none between 0 and 3 in the first column. The second column, we have none. The third column, we have 2. We have 0 and 1. The fourth column, we have 1, just the number 2. And then the fifth column, we have none. So the frequency that we see data points that range between 0 and 3 is 3. So I'll go ahead and I'll write that in there. And then the next one is 3 is less than or equal to x is less than 6. So we'd go back up there on the table and we'd count that those that are 3, 4, 5, not including 6. So we'd count up those three values of numbers. And then we'd write down the frequency here, which I'm just going to do. I already have those tallied up. And then the last one is 12 or 15 is less than or equal to x is less than 18. And there were only one of those, and that, that's actually the 15 right there. So those are our frequency that we see numbers occurring within those class intervals right there. The next thing that we're going to do, and sometimes when we do a frequency distribution in a histogram, the histogram is constructed with relative frequencies. Sometimes it's constructed with the frequency. So I'll go ahead and I'll calculate the relative frequencies, and we can talk about that a little bit. But a relative frequency, and I need to take one step back, one check that we have right here in this column for the frequency, if we add all those numbers up just to check and make sure we did this correct and counted all the values, when we add all those up, it should end up being 25, which was our total number of data points that we had. So 3 plus 6 is 9, plus 9 is 18, plus 5 is 23, plus 1 is 24, plus 1 is 25. So this adds up to 25. So we should have the count correct. And, you know, it doesn't mean that we have the interval correct. We may want to go back and double check those as well. But we have the count correct. Now, what we do to calculate our rel relative frequency is we take this frequency for this interval and we divide it by the total number of data points that we have. So we'd have 3 divided by 25, which as a relative frequency, we really express those usually in a decimal or a percent. So this would be 0.12. This would be 6 over 25, which is 0.24. And this would be 9 over 25, which is equal to 0.36. This is 5 divided by 25. And this would be 0.20. And then this would be 1 over 25, which is equal to 0.04. And the last one would also be 1 over 25 for the relative frequency. 
which would be 0 0.04 also. Now the other thing is when you add up these relative frequencies, these should all add up to be 1. So 0 0.12 plus 0 0.24 is 0 0.36, plus 0 0.36 is uh, 0 0.72, and then plus 0.2 is going to be 0 0.92, plus 0 0.04 is going to be 0 0.96, and then plus 0 0.04 is going to be uh, 1. So this would all add up to be 1.0 zero if we add up all those numbers right there. And that would let us know that our relative frequency totals are correct and we did the correct uh, conversion when we add those up. And later on when we get into probability, these relative frequencies actually become a form of empirical probabilities that we'll use uh, when we're doing other stuff later on. But for right now, let's just keep our mind on the uh, relative frequency. Once we already have that information built, the next thing we want to do is we want to start constructing our, our histogram. So we'll use all these intervals right here and then the frequencies in order to construct this. So this is what our graph looks like right here. And what we're going to do is on this vertical right here, this is going to be our frequency. And on our horizontal axes or our x axes, these are going to be our values of our data point. And we're going to divide those up into uh, categories in bars. When we do this, our first one we said was between 0 and 3 which that frequency of 3. So it would go from here and start off at 0 and here would be our bar right there if I can draw a straight line. So that would be our first uh, bar. Our second one would be a height of 6. It would be about double that. I'm having some difficulty drawing straight on my tablet. So that would be our second one. Our third one was a height of 9. So that one's even higher. So about right here. And that goes up to 9 for our, our interval width. Our third one is a height of five. Our last two are a height of one. Now if you remember, we, we talked about using the left endpoint rule when we did this. First bar right here includes all of the values zero, one, and two, but does not include three. Three starts in this next one. This includes the values three, four, and five, but does not include six. And what that does is it allows us to avoid double counting. Otherwise, we'd double count some of our values within this interval. So in other words, it would be counted both here in this column right there and then also here in this uh, column or bar right here. So this is what that frequency distribution would look like when we're graphing the frequencies. And the relative frequencies, all we'd do is we'd put our relative frequency here on this vertical axis right there and we'd have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and we graph the height based on the relative frequency. So this is basically how we construct a frequency distribution in a histogram. Good luck with your assignments and your studies.